Hello and welcome to an introduction to programming using Visual Basic exercises for beginners. This exercise is called poker. A poker hand can be stored in a two-dimensional array. So the declaration of an array hand with indexes 3 and 12 declares an array with 52 elements where the first subscript ranges from the four suits and the second subscript ranges over the 13 denominations. A poker hand is specified by placing once in the elements corresponding to the cards in the hand. We will see the table in just a minute. We are to write a program that requests the five cards as input from the user, creates the related array and passes the array to procedures to determine the type of hand. Flush means all cards with the same suit, straight which are cards that have consecutive denominations, but ace can be either first before 2 or after king. And there could be a straight flush, which is basically the consecutive denominations and the same suit. 4 of a kind, full house, which is 3 cards of one denomination and 2 cards of the other. 3 of a kind, 2 pairs, 1 pair or none of the above. So here's the table uh, that represents a hand of ace of heart, ace of diamond, 5 of spades, 9 of club and queen of hearts. So imagine this would be our array with the denominations in columns and suits in rows. So club would be our first suit. So if we place a 1 here, that means that we get a club of 9 or 9 of club. I'm, I'm not a poker player, so I'm not sure exactly how to read that. Uh, if we get an ace in our second row, then means we'll get a diamond, because that's our second suit in the array. The same with the hearts, which is next. If we get an ace, we place one there. And if we get any spades, we place it into the spade row, which would be the index 3. And for example, if we get index 3, and then the second index would be 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, then we know that we got a spade of 5. And here's our form. We will enter the cards. We'll enter just numbers. Ace will be 1, Jack 11, Queen 12, King 13. And of course, all the numbers like 2, 3, 4, and 5, and so forth. And we will place the suit in the second text boxes. Now, these are masked text boxes that will be designed to accept only letters. And the only letters we'll expect is the D for diamonds, heart will be H, club will be C, and S will be for spades. So once we enter the denominations and the suit, we will, uh, we will click the display type of hand and we will display what type of hand we have. So I'm in Visual Studio 2015. Here's my form, just like we saw it. Let's start coding. So I'll just double click the display type of hand button. Before we actually proceed coding uh, the sub procedure for this event, Let's create another sub procedure that I will call input card. And this will basically take the input from the user and assign values to them that we can then analyze as uh, what hand we actually have. So in order to analyze what hand we have, we have to pass a few arguments to it. The first one will be the two dimensional array called hand. So since we are not declaring any form level variables, this will be passed by reference so whatever changes we make to this array within our sub procedure here will be permanent. In other words, we'll be able to manipulate the array from within our sub procedure, even though it is just passed as an argument. So by ref, and we are passing the hand, which will be a two-dimensional array of integers. The next, we need to pass another array and another by reference, because again, we need to make changes to it. And that will be the suits. And it will be just a regular array as integers. The next will pass an array of denominations. Once again, it's going to be by reference. And now we need to pass the input from the user. We need to pass the denomination again. This one is our array that will store the information. But uh, remember, we are passing the denomination from five different text boxes and also the suit, which is another five text boxes. So the denominations are just called denomination string because that's coming from the input as a string and the same with the suits. So all these are our arguments. 
and now we can proceed. So the first we have to store the card into an array. So remember our denominations are all integers like ace is 1, king is 13 and so forth. So we will declare another variable which will be like a single denomination and we will convert the input from the user to an integer and assign it to it. So our denomination string will be passed into the denomination integer. Of course in order to do that we need to convert the denomination string to an integer because by default it's a string. However remember the indexes start from 0 and our denomination start from 1 so we have to do minus 1. So let's say if you look at it again if ace is 1 then that would be our first card which is the index of 0. If king is 13 that would be our last card which is the index of 12. And we also need an integer for the suit. But the suit will be assigned in just a minute. We will simply evaluate the suit string. We will see if it's a C for clubs or D for diamonds, H for hearts or everything else which would be spades. So we'll do a select case statement and we'll evaluate the suit string. However we want to evaluate it from to upper just so there's no discrepancies between lowercase and uppercase we'll simply convert it all to upper. So the first in our array is the clubs so if the case is C then our suit will be 0. That's our first index. If the case is D which is diamonds then our suit will be 1. And of course H for hearts will be suit equals 2 and everything else which is the last possible would be spades that would be suit 3. Now we use case else so technically if the user enters any other letter other than C, D and H we will assign it as spades because I, in this case I'm not going to be doing any particular input validation but feel free to do that. But in this exercise I want to concentrate on how to handle the arrays. So after our select case we can set the indices for card to 1. So basically we will follow the table. So we will follow the suit and the column for the denomination and we will place 1 into the appropriate column or appropriate field that uh, corresponds with the kind of intersection of the rows and columns for that card. So our hand with the indexes of the suit and denomination will have 1. So for example again if you look at the at the table if the indexes are 0 and 8 then we have a club of 9 because 0 is the row for the clubs and the second index 8 would correspond with 9. And the next thing will increment the counter for suit and for the denomination. So in our array suits with the index of suit we will do plus equals 1 and in our array of denominations with the index of denomination or denom once again it will be plus equals 1. So this is our input card sub procedure. Now we can call this sub procedure from our button click event for the display. So first we need to declare these arrays hand, suit and denominations. So our hand array will have the indexes of 3 and 12 as upper bounds and that will give us the 52 cards. Now you may wonder how it is 52 when it's 3 times 12 would be 36 but it's actually starting from index is 0 so it's actually 4 times 13 and that's 52. And so this will be the integers but also the suits so there's 4 suits in other words with the upper bound of 3 0, 1, 2 and 3 that makes 4 and denominations which will be with the upper bounds of 12 in other words 13 denominations and all of these are integers. So now we will read the input from the user and pass all the information into our input card sub procedure. So we'll call the input card and we will pass the hand as the argument, that's the first argument by reference. The next argument by reference is the suits and the next one is the denominations array and the next one is the denomination string. So this is the input from the user. So this is the txt denominations 1, uh, that's how I named them, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 because there's five text boxes that text. So whatever the user entered into this text box is going to be passed 
into the sub procedure input card. And the last one is the masked text box for the suit. So it's MTB suit one dot text. So this would be the C, D, H, or S. So this will be the first card. But we have five cards, but they will be pretty much the same. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste it there four more times. So the second card will be again hand sealed denominations, but this would be the text box two, and the sealed will be two as well. The next one will be three, the next one four, and the next one is five. So this is our five cards that are being passed into this uh, input card sub procedure one by one. And now we can determine and display the score. Now in order to do that, we need to find how to actually determine the score. So I'm going to create a function get score that will return a string which will be basically what our hand is. Is it a royal flush? Is it a full house? Four of a kind and so forth. And just like before we need to pass the three arrays to it. However this time we don't need them by reference because we are not going to be changing them or adding anything to them. We're going to read from them. So I'm going to pass the hand as integer, the suits as integer, and the denominations as integer. And next thing, we have to define how to evaluate each possibility of our hand. So let's start with a function that will be return a boolean and check if this is a flush. And in order to evaluate whether it's a flush, it's basically all the cards of the same suit. So all we need to pass is the suits array to it. And again, we don't have to pass it by reference because we're just going to read from it. And this is going to return a boolean, whether it is flush or not. So to test for flush, we have to loop through each of our suits. And then if uh, all suits are the same, then we will return true. Otherwise, we can return false. So for suit as integer equals from zero to three because there's four suits. Now remember, in our input card, we did the counter to count the suits and the denominations. So basically what we have to check now is uh, whether the suits is five, meaning we have five of the same suits. So simply enough, we will do if statement. And if our suits array with the suit, or this would be the index as we are looping through, if it equals five, then we can return true. We have five of the same suits. If we finish the loop and we don't return true, we'll simply return false because this is not a flush. All right, so this is our is flush. Now let's check for a full house. So if you look at the description, full house is three cards of one denomination and two cards of the other. Once again, it returns a boolean. And since we only need to check the denominations, I'm going to pass the denominations array in it as an integer. So to check if this is a full house, we will do another for loop and we're looping through all the denominations, which is 0 to 12. And basically, what we're going to do is check if any of the denomination is 1, 4, or 5. Because if that's the case, then it's not a full house. In any other case, it would be a full house. So if our denominations array with the index of denom within our for loop, if that equals 1, or denom's array with the denom index is greater than three, so that will cover four and five, then we'll return false. This is not a full house. However, if we loop through it and we don't return false, then we can return true because this is a full house because all denominations are either two or three. All right, so that's our full house. Next, let's check if it's four of a kind. So once again, we are going to be checking the denominations. So we're going to pass as argument the denominations array. Since we are checking whether it's four of a kind, so if our denoms with the index of denom would equal four, then we have four of a kind. So I'm just gonna borrow this and pass the for loop in there and uh, I'll delete what I don't need. So we are checking if the denoms equal four and if it is, then we will return true. Otherwise, we will return false. So this is four of the kind. I'm going to copy paste the whole function because now I'm going to see if it's three of a kind. That's another hand. So it's three of kind. And all we need to change is if the denoms equal three. 
Okay, the next hand would be if it's two pairs.